Hello everyone, welcome into today's live webinar here on CBT News presented by SpeedShift Media. I'm Joe Gum, your moderator for the afternoon. The title of this webinar is Don't Get Owned, Marketing Your Pre-Owned Vehicles. With us today to talk more about that is Ian Cruikshank, VP of Sales and Marketing for SpeedShift Media. Ian, welcome. Thank you very much, We're Joe. Excited it's really about good this. to be here. Yeah. I, uh, I was nearly impeded from being here with a little ice storm in Toronto to keep things exciting, but it's uh, it's all worked out but as you made it should. It. Yeah. yeah, we didn't yeah. have to, uh, you know, FaceTime or Yeah, Skype well, we were talking about like that, the emergency so. Skype situation. We got out of uh, doing that, so that's uh, that's always a pleasure and good good to be here in Atlanta. Welcome to warm Atlanta. Yes. Right? Warm weather. Love, so. love the temperature. Thank you for that. Well, we're going to have a great time talking about this topic, you bet. intriguing topic, so uh, let's get started. But before yeah. that, tell us a little bit about your bio. Those who oh, okay. are tuning in, maybe they're not aware of what you do so, up in Canada. Um, you know, I'm a pretty serious guy, right? You know, serious fellow here. I, I uh, take digital very seriously. I take marketing very seriously. But I'm really not all that serious, and I prefer to make fun of myself, frankly. And, you know, this is the typical me. This, um, if anybody remembers Napoleon Dynamite, if you've been yes. in one of my talks before, one of my sessions before, you've seen a few costumes before. You may even have seen Halloween. And I promise and, you, they uh, remembered it. Yeah, right. Yeah, Especially absolutely. if you wore that outfit. Right absolutely. There. So you know, you, you got to remember, Leah. Give it more context. If you're not entirely sure, this gives it a little more context. And and this is really my my wife and I. The year prior, she was Pedro with Napoleon. Okay. So it made good sense that she got to be a more, you know, serious she character. She makes yeah. a better Han Solo, better looking Han Solo she does. than you do. I uh, uh, I can assure you of that. So, yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so, so do well. you, you're a university professor. We should tell people I am, that. I am. Uh, teaching uh, business and, and marketing, yeah, that type exactly. of thing. Yeah, exactly. Focus on Do you wear outfits like this? Uh, no. Okay. No, I go with the uh, you know patch on the elbow thing, the <laughs> pipe, and, and we make it work that and way. Speaking of British accent. Yeah, yeah good. jolly good. Yeah. Indeed. All right, so you have a, a well rounded bio, and yep. obviously, uh, people who've been to seminars and conferences and summits, they know all about you and your passion for yeah. uh, this topic. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. You know, well, know they, people are they know about uh, They know about this world. They know about where we're from. Okay, we're a crazy bunch of Canucks, frankly. We, uh, you know, we take a few things very seriously. We're, we're, we're vandals at heart. But when we do it, you know, we're nice about it. Of course, okay? the thumbs up. Unless we lose a friggin' hockey game. Yeah. Okay. And then it's a problem, and the whole hell breaks loose. Selfies and with all that kind of fire stuff. Fire and destruction. Uh, and that, I, I don't it know is Armageddon. Selfie. It is. You guys. It was absolute Armageddon, and uh, you know we'll never get that close again. Clearly, if you've been following the standings uh, this year, Vancouver. Yes. Not uh, maybe in, in, next well, year or this year. Super close. We'll Someone see. will make the playoffs we'll from uh, from Canada in the yeah. NHL. Here's hoping. But I have a test for you first off, Joe. All right. So please, this test. Please let it be multiple choice. It, it, it is. Okay, good. There's only two choices, a 50-50 chance. Joe, you, you should be okay with this okay, one. So yeah. the test is, and we play this often in Vancouver because uh -oh. we got a housing thing going on. Have a look at that property there. Okay. That is a good looking space, is it, it not? It, it is, but also, uh, so that's my choice, right? Yeah. A dream so it's home. crack shack or mansion. What do you think? I think it's a dream home for yeah. a crack shack addict. Okay, so it wasn't a crack shack. Okay. Okay, it was a marijuana grow up. Okay, right? this is Vancouver we're talking about. Not Colorado. And the reality is, you know, it is definitely a very nice property that could be sold probably for two million dollars if you sat on it for about six months. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it's out of control, and this is this is why. So, this is the tourism Vancouver part of my discussion. I always like to share a little bit of what we do uh, up north, and I want to make sure that all you folks all around the U.S. and Canada take the time to come out and visit our yeah, hometown. Yeah, it's beautiful. Better than Ottawa, and right? oh. Absolutely. Better Montreal. than where that, that good-looking prime minister lives and, and yeah, all that kind exactly. of stuff we were talking about off-camera. Best-looking world leader. Yeah. Right? Yeah, here, here. Yeah. And I don't know that that's going to change uh, come Friday, but... Um, I don't think it is either. Uh, yeah. It's not... It's less tan. Too like, less tan. Than our the, the, leader. the less tan leader. Yeah. But let's, let's get serious for a second. Let's get serious and we'll talk about this pre-owned marketing world. It's important. Okay? So... So often, when we're out in market, we're talking with franchise dealers, we're focused on helping them with their marketing, and we're focused on bringing them tools to help them do better at what they do every day. And there's an interesting piece here. The, the weighting of new vehicle marketing to pre-owned vehicle marketing is typically distributed in this way. So three quarters to the new, uh, one quarter to the pre-owned. And you know that ends up being a bit of a tricky thing when you want to move pre-owned vehicles, wouldn't you say? Yeah, okay, so looking at this, I want to ask, why does it matter that only 25% of the emphasis is on pre-owned marketing? Okay, 
Well, let's, let's take the time to look at a few stats, right? So NADA, great event coming up in the next little while, also a great research partner in, uh, in the automotive space. Yep. A lot of research here. So we'll have a quick look, right? So when we're talking about new and pre-owned cars, okay, the draw, of course, all those millions and millions of dollars, we're looking at 15 million versus 7.2 million in 2016, right? So way more emphasis in our day-to-day, -day, how franchise dealers are rewarded for co-op, how franchise dealers are rewarded for their stores, all that sort of stuff, really leans towards that huge amount. So what we're talking about here is this emphasis that comes from the shine, the glitz, the glamour, all that sort of stuff. But when you break it down and you start to think about selling price, right? So pre-owned cars, the gross margin is that? gonna be significantly higher, right? Yep. So that's a pretty serious reason to start to think about it. Well, it goes on, right? When you talk about the used cars, the retail gross profit, right? So when we're talking about this kind of idea, it's up by 500 bucks, okay? Significantly better when you're talking gross profit on those pre-owned vehicles. Not a bad thing when that's coming to making money on your lot. And there's exactly lots right. of stores that we'll talk to sometimes that their emphasis is pre-owned vehicles, right? That uh, that's, yeah, that, that number will switch, so 75% will be focused on pre-owned. It's not often, though. Another piece here. Look at this. Net profit. Okay? So when you're considering that, you're actually, more often than not, losing money on that new car sale. Okay? So you know, you've got to figure out ways to, to make that up. So really, it needs that F&I. Okay, it needs those add-ons, it needs those fixed ops, and it's really, you know, you're, you're putting that vehicle out into the world to bring you cash later on, right? right? You're not necessarily making money on that vehicle up front, whereas on the pre-owned side, you're making profit immediately, according to NADA, right? right? According to their research teams. And that's an important piece of the puzzle. It even continues when you're talking whatever brand in the marketplace. So if we're talking luxury, if we're talking domestic, imported, really that continues. Look at that luxury stat, right? Selling luxury vehicles, pretty tough. You better be on your game to make real money in that luxury space. And, you know, next time we go and buy a car, we, we you know, want to consider, are you really, you know, do you need to fight that much when you already know right, that you're probably exactly. doing pretty well by that yep. store? So, you know, that's that thing. That, that idea now that we want to talk about and, you know, some ways and some tools that will help you with through this discussion are how to shift some of that effort or even find tools that are going to work more effectively across both sides of your business, that new and that pre-owned business. Okay, so why do you feel that the way dealerships market new vehicles won't translate well to marketing used vehicles? Okay, so think of it this way. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors in the marketplace that are different from a new buyer to a pre-owned buyer, right? That's just the nature of the beast. So some of the things that we look at, right, people want to visit all of your details online before they come into store. That's where we see this stat, okay? The visitation significantly shrinking over the last number of years. So maybe it'd be five or 10 stores five or 10 years ago. Now it's a question of one store, right? You're going into one location to make your decision to buy that car. So when we're talking about new vehicles, typically the consumer thinks, I know what I want and I need to know you have it, okay? I gotta figure that out. And when we're going down that path and we're thinking on the new side, the typical consumer is thinking, yeah, I know that you've got that vehicle. You're a Chevy dealer, you're gonna have that Silverado. And you're probably gonna be able to get it with the trim level, with all the packages that I want to make it work, okay? Even if I want the lift kit, you'll be able to sort me out. But when we're talking about that pre-owned vehicle, the typical consumer is assuming that you probably don't have that exact car that you're looking for. So they wanna see it, they wanna confirm it, and they wanna do that in a digital format today. They wanna do that from their couch, in their underwear is what it is. Right. We'll just leave it at that. So the other aspect, okay, is when we're talking about consumer behavior and buying online, you're, you're also considering that each store probably has a lot of off-brand inventory within their pre-owned, okay, probably in the neighborhood of 50%, which is a nice thing. You can really use that off-brand inventory if you're promoting it well to attract that cross shopper, right? To attract that buyer that's coming in for that Corolla when you're actually sitting there and you've got the Honda vehicle in your lot, right? The equivalent Honda. Yep. Okay, so those sorts of pieces start to make it a little trickier to go make, model, in your promotional efforts. And that's the most common when we're talking about marketing new vehicles, right? So this idea, right, we need to start to think more about marketing our vehicles at that inventory level, 
Okay, we want to make sure that consumers are, and when I say inventory, I mean VIN, right? That VIN specific level. So we can say, hey, I've got specific pre-owned inventory that you're considering based on your search, based on your behaviors online, based on all those activities. I've got that specific VIN that I can put in front of you, right? So let's have a look here. We've got all sorts of different types of advertising we can do, right? SEM, okay? So branded keywords, okay, typically not inventory focused. We're right. talking Toyota, we're talking Corolla, we're talking, you know, those different kinds of things. SEM, non-branded keywords. So then we're talking uh, the pickup truck, okay? We're talking the Econo sedan, that kind of thing. Okay? Again, not inventory focused. Right? When we get into SEO and blog articles, okay, the things that we're producing are typically relative to our brand, not typically focused on what it is that we're trying to communicate to the dealer vis-a-vis -vis the VIN that I have on the lot, the vehicle specific cars I've got on the lot. Same thing with videos, same thing with display, and that's traditional display we're talking about because we are going to talk about some more interesting display today. And then the Facebook side of things, you know, those typical postings, right, they're generally not inventory focused, okay, they're um, an offer, maybe a service offer even, all these different things to help the consumer. So we've already got quite a few, right, we've got six pieces here and they're not yet focused on inventory. We get down to Facebook and sponsored carousel, okay, where we're starting to show those pieces of inventory to the consumer, we're going to get some better performance out of that. And frankly, that's not happening all that often in the marketplace today. And then listings, right, auto trader, car gurus, all the usual suspects in the listings world, right. Absolutely very focused. That's the name of the game in those environments. But then we're talking a pretty heavily balanced or imbalanced scale where you've got seven or, uh, you know, seven or six of those things that are not focused on inventory, but they're fairly effective ways to market new vehicles. Not so much when we're talking used. So the assumption you've got that car on the lot versus the assumption that the pre-owned vehicle is not on the lot. How do you combat that? Right. So, but here's a question. Let's go back. Don't, how do you not get owned in, I guess is my question. Because we were talking about dealerships market to the inventory level now anyway, don't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, so the inventory level, you know, you can think of it this way. Inventory for many people stops at model, maybe trim. Okay. Maybe they're talking the um, Toyota Prius C, right? The city version and they're putting that out in the market, but that's as granular as it gets. We're talking about, like I said, that VIN level marketing. So yeah. being able to get really, really specific, specific with the cars out there in market. Gotcha. And that's the real kicker here. So let's look. We've got a few categories here that we're going to be talking about today, which are the need to drop. Okay, this is the one, and really there's only one in need to drop, and it's, it's that one that folks at home or in the office today may be looking at and saying, you know what, I'm doing that. I should probably lay off. Right? The next is need to have. And need to have is really that need to be at par. Okay? That need to be at least um, close to competitive in the marketplace or in that, that echelon with folks that are doing things a little more correctly. And then need to win is taking things a little bit further okay? and making sure that you're going to have success in your day to day and that you're going to be the winner in that marketplace. So let's have a look at a few of those. So the drop. Okay, the stop, drop, and roll even, right? This is the drop where you're basically saying, okay, see these ads in market. So we've got Westwood Honda, okay, promoting that they've got a whole bunch of pre-owned Hondas. Okay, we've got a store uh, promoting GMCs. We've got a whole bunch of GMC trucks, a whole bunch of pre-owned trucks. Come on down and Yay. check them out. The consumer doesn't want to come on down and check it out. <laughs> right. They've shown us with all their activity online. They want to see it. Show them those vehicles in your ads. Yeah. Make it clear that you've got those vehicles. Look at this one over here. And this is just a text ad. So this is your search engine marketing. And they're basically saying, yeah, someone searched. Maybe they were searching for a specific Ford or Lincoln. And we're saying, yeah, I've got all of them. Trust me. Right? Mm. Not as performant as it could nope. be. And there's so many solutions out there to help you be more performant. So if you're doing this today, drop in favor of what we're going to be talking about next. OK. So make model based stuff. So, you know, when we're talking about make, I've got all of these Fords, I've got all these GMCs, I've got all these Kias, whatever the case, it's just not enough for today's consumer. So if you can get more granular and you can start to say things like, I've got a lot of Honda Civics, okay? At least that's one layer deeper where you've got maybe 15 
sublevels of your brand, 15 models, right. and they're saying, you know, I've got a lot of those 15 that you're looking for in market. That's better, right? Most definitely. When we're talking about the Toyota, when we're talking about the Lexus IS, same sort of thing. We're talking about that consumer that's looking for a vehicle and is punching in that particular model and saying, yeah, I've got a few more of those, can help you out. Okay. Okay, much better than, whoo, got lots of used cars, come on down. Yeah. Right? Just doesn't work as much mm -hmm. anymore. Okay, next piece of the puzzle, when we're going into model-based ads, you want to be a little more specific, okay? So those pieces that we're talking about, say you've got a CDRJ store, okay? You can break that down into your most popular, and you can figure out, okay, of the Chrysler vehicles, of the Dodge vehicles, which are the ones we want to talk about the most, right? Find those most commonly stocked cars. Okay, make sure you're building out keyword programs for those. Okay, making sure that you're getting that all up into Google and that you're filtering so that you're driving that traffic not just to some homepage situation, but that you're taking them to the search results page. That is filtered down to the vehicles they're considering. So if you say, hey, I've got all these Civics, well, why not make the click tag go through to your web page for your pre-owned vehicles showing all the Civics? Okay? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Not a tough thing to improve to, not, a, not too right. tough a bar to get to, okay? More model make or model based ads, we're talking in the, in the Facebook world, okay? Facebook is doing some neat stuff these days to get more and more, <laughs> frankly, more and more of tier three automotive dollars. Yeah. Um, but in it's a reality, nice little startup. Just yeah, a couple of yeah. uh, right, nice a billion startup. people the, uh, looking at it every day. Chatting with my, my sister the other day, she's the, the banker in the house. Um, you know, I'm chatting about unicorn companies, and she's like, really, there's only one unicorn. Right. These guys, yeah. Yep. So great, they can you know, run on rainbows and all sorts of pixie dust and that kind of stuff. But the reality, they're putting out better and better solutions now to be able to market inventory at that model level. And okay? maybe we'll have a simple selections. webinar one day of concentrating on those dealerships that still don't take advantage yeah. of all the great things yeah. that Facebook is yeah. offering. Exactly, so. exactly. You know, these are important pieces of the puzzle to the point where we're even starting to figure out ways to integrate them into what we do with the Auto Audience Network, into what we do with specials and st stuff that we can talk about maybe at the end. Pros and cons, okay. So easy to set up theoretically within the Facebook world, but it is time consuming. All of these pieces are time consuming. When you're gonna get more granular manually, Okay, you can do it on your own as that internet manager or as that used car manager in the office or maybe you've brought someone in to help you with that. Or maybe you're a big group and you've got a whole department of folks that are making this magic happen. Well, it's an effort. Yeah. It's either 100% or it's 50% and, yeah. and you reap that. And you really have to put that effort in. The old days of, you know, social's free. <laughs> yeah. It never has been, right? There's always been a, a HR, a human resource cost involved. There's all sorts of great products that are coming out. Oh yeah. Right? So the other aspect is the inventory listings side of things. All the usual suspects even threw in our Canadian friends in Kijiji. Okay, so eBay Motors up, uh, up north is called Kijiji. But the, the factor is that, you know, all of these are really tailored to inventory and that's nice, right? Now getting into premium listings and going beyond that within those inventory sites, we've learned more and more that that's not entirely necessary and there's other tools, other areas where you can put your dollars to potentially get more value. So with the pros and cons here, right, so easy to align with how the buyer uh, is thinking, right? So put in the search terms, vehicles are coming up, that's an important reality, right? And it's important to be in those environments so consumers can find those vehicles and make those decisions that they need to make. Cons, right, there's so many, right? And we're talking about that market saturation. Market saturation of search engine marketing has increased the price and continues to year over year. Same sort of thing here. Market saturation has made it so that you're really not differentiating, but you gotta be there. So be there, in my recommendation, at the minimum, right? Make sure you're there, make sure you can be found when people are searching, but then start to find ways to find those customers outside of these environments. Fair enough? Yep. Right on. So, need to win, okay? What do you need to be able to win in this marketplace of advertising pre-owned vehicles, okay? Of remarketing vehicles, right? So we're talking about getting more dynamic and being more granular at that VIN level of what it is that you're promoting in the marketplace. So one of the first and, and frankly most interesting, and it is very difficult to find uh, a team who 
does this really effectively, right? Then there's mixed reviews out in the marketplace, and I think that's really uh, partner dependent. So when you're working with someone, um, what they're capable of doing within that dynamic effort. I think the key, and it's an important part for speed shift media and our business, nothing is a set and forget mode anymore, right? The reality is human in intervention is required. So when you're talking about getting into dynamic search and saying, okay, a consumer goes into the market and they say, all right, Ford F-150 in Surrey, right, they might be pumping in these uh, search terms and they're going to get something real specific, okay, a real specific vehicle and lo and behold, you click on that and you're going right to that there it vehicle is. detail page, right? That's a pretty darn good user experience. You may look at your web traffic and say, hey, they only looked at one page, but they looked at the sweetest page that you've got on the lot for that intender. Right, that's e real important stuff. Even some stuff. nice photoshopped mountains. Even some nice Photoshop mountains. Come on, no, that's that's legit right there. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> Who knows? They drive every one of their cars out into the back country that's and, right. and shoot and that shot. Shoot that shot. Yeah, 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 most definitely. Now we could do a whole other segment talking about making sure you've got nice images of your pre-owned cars. Right. So that's another another story altogether, and oh, not yeah. stock photos. Ouch. Mm. Okay. But when you're thinking about that, there's a lot of folks out there. These are some folks that we know of that use dynamic uh, inventory search, and that's a, that's a great thing to, to look at. So look up some of these guys and other folks in the market. Maybe your own uh, agency that you're working with as a, as a dealer has some of these tools for you already. Okay? So a nice, nice piece of that puzzle. So next, um, we're going to think, okay, what's good and what's not so good about that? And I've alluded to some of these things already. but. Really, the, the pro side of it is you're aligning with that consumer, that, that person who's searching in market that's keen to see whatever it is that you've got available there, right? They're making sure that you've got all of that on the lot. The next side of it is, con, oh it ain't so easy, mm -mm. right? So you want to find a friend. You know, if we're talking the million dollar thing, you want to dial a friend. You want to make sure that you've got a little bit of something, a little bit of someone out there to help you. And you've got great partners. You focus on selling cars when the traffic comes to you and let that partner focus on dynamic marketing or dynamic inventory search in this case. Okay, so that's the real tidbits on that one. Then we're talking about... And that's not a bad con to have. No. I mean, it's... Not, 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 yeah. You know, it, it really is the, the nature of uh, digital, okay, and the nature of, of our business and our, and our world today. When you're talking about marketing, really for any kind of business in the marketplace, Digital has made it so you can't just put an ad in the paper. You can't just go on radio and yep. hope that your showroom is going to fill up. You must engage in so many more of these environments that are completely fragmented, so you need expertise in all of these areas. 100%. Can you do that on your own? Not likely. Right? Not to that level. Not to that level, yeah. indeed. You know, great effort. Uh, yeah. Good try. Well, and frankly, you know, there's a lot of great places that have that, that genius that sits in the corner of the, uh, the showroom and he's got his head down or her head down and, and making magic all day long. And, and that's fantastic. But when it gets into more stores or when it gets into more inventory or just a new tool coming into the marketplace, like you said, folks that maybe aren't using Facebook or folks that aren't using dynamic inventory display, you know, find the friend, the partner that yeah. can help you do that. So dynamic inventory display, a place is near and dear to my heart, um, often imitated. <laughs> um, <Never. and laughs> Duplicated. Exactly right. right. Often imitated, never duplicated. But the, the reality is dynamic inventory is a nuanced tool that is so difficult to get exactly right. And for us at SpeedShift Media, it's been a 10-year process. We've been doing it for folks like Autotrader, Cars.com, Edmunds.com, Jumpstart, all sorts of great people where we're helping them. And really in the last few years, we said, you know what, we should help dealers directly. We should bring that enterprise knowledge and technology to the dealer. Why not? So this ad format, you've maybe even seen this in an auto trader environment. Well, of course, this is now available to dealers directly, which is phenomenal. And I'm sure they loved it. They have been loving it, uh, most definitely. So, you know, different pieces, right? Being able to automatically load inventory, and that's all your inventory. You're new, you're pre-owned. Here we're focusing on that pre-owned, right? So we've got all these pre-owned vehicles, and you can intelligently go out and market and say, hey, I've seen this consumer. I've seen Joe and he wants that new pickup. Actually, he maybe wants the minivan for the girls, right? Yes. Girls, uh, all girls, isn't all it? All girls. Yeah, that's right, that's what I remember. <laughs> okay, perfect. So four girls, we're gonna all pile into the minivan, and mom's gonna rip them out to soccer practice or whatever it is, but you gotta make sure to have that. Now, when it comes time for Joe to find a new vehicle, he starts punching in all the information, reading reviews. Pretty quickly, the inventory display figures out what Joe's looking for. 
and make sure to go in market and show him the specific vehicles, the specific ads that have the content that you're looking for. Thus making your process significantly easier to see that, yeah, lo and behold, the uh, Toyota Sienna is available just down the road from me from a dealer that I'm familiar with. Outstanding, right? You maybe weren't even thinking of it, and it could be that that was a Honda store, right? right? And it showed yep. you that pre-owned Toyota intelligently, okay? When you want to get into this world, our door is always open, right? Speed Shift Media, of course, but you can also just speak to your agency. We support many, many, many partners out in the marketplace, reseller partners, agencies that sell the auto audience network and sell dynamic inventory display. So just talk to your agency that you're currently working with and say, hey, I heard about this speed shift display stuff, or I heard about this dynamic inventory display, this auto audience network thing. I want to get on it. I want to check it out. Or you just give us a call and we'll help you out. Now, there are going to be some pros and cons, right? right? But here, same sort of thing, right? Pros, all sorts of great things going on, being able to complement that SEM. And really, when you're running a strong display campaign, consider you've showed someone that Toyota Sienna, and you recognize maybe the brand, the next time you search, you're maybe searching for the Toyota Sienna at that Honda store, okay? Uh -huh. Something you wouldn't have done previously, wouldn't have considered previously, but now you're gonna be able to see that in your search results, so the boost in SEM. There's oh. a, real, a real synergy that happens in marketing when you're using the tools that are gonna bring more value together to make that work more effectively. The con side, again, like dynamic inventory uh, search, dynamic inventory display is tougher to maintain. And we've spoken to people who've been trying to do this for two and three and four years, and lo and behold, we walk in the door and it's, it's like this second coming and you know, able to help them with their help issues. Help the, the person in the corner with yes, the head Yes, help down, the person the in the corner on. who's started to sweat a little bit, yeah. started to get a little bit concerned, and now you've got these problems taken care of. And finally one day said, I need help. Yeah, Please. help, I need somebody. Call speed yeah, shift media. We're gonna go into Beatles pretty soon and it's gonna get messy. All right, so another tool out there in the marketplace, your Facebook carousel ad. So another piece that you can start to bring real inventory into. And this is a piece that's interesting. We're, we're not gonna talk about um, our a new product that we've got coming out. We may, if we've, if we've got a little time, feel free to uh, ask towards the end. Um, but uh, a new product coming out for us in the market where we're using this really cost-effective tool to promote inventory that's been sitting around too long. Maybe a vehicle that's had a birthday. Maybe a vehicle that's just been sitting around that bit too long or you're just ready to cut the price on it and promote it as effectively as you can. You don't necessarily... How many days? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, we're talking, generally we have our, our ticker set at about 60 days, 60. sometimes 45. Gotcha. It really depends on the turnover of the lot. And that's a real important thing for folks to consider as well. When you're thinking about your business, oftentimes people will look for that number. What's the benchmark? What should I be doing? I'm a firm believer that you need to be benchmarking against yourself. What is it for you today? What does your performance look like today? How can you then make it better? Okay, so then you work towards making it better. If you're trying to compare that Kia store in Detroit to that Kia store that's in uh, you know, New York or San Diego or something like that, there's probably a little differences, yep. right? If you're thinking, okay, well, I'm a Mercedes store and I'm comparing it to a Ford truck store, right? Pretty different. So you don't all wanna be fighting for the same metrics or benchmarks. You wanna make sure that you figure out what you're doing and work towards improving that. And you can improve that with a lot of these tools here. So, Pro side, okay, make model level with integration, okay? So when you're uploading or when you're keeping these details up to date, preferably through an API according to Facebook, you want to make sure that you're keeping that inventory up to date so that you can promote those in the carousel ads, sponsor those posts, get them targeted to the right folks. Scalability, pretty tough unless you're getting help, okay? Not a perfect fit for all pre-owned, right? Pretty hard to find that like-minded uh, buyer when you're talking about 4x4s, that kind of thing, or when you're talking about the more intricate vehicle, though Facebook has settings, right? 4x4 enthusiasts, different yeah. pieces like that. And then performance is gonna vary by partner, and that's really the case for any of these need-to-win tools, right? Performance is going to vary depending on who you're working with, and that's just the, the nature of the beast. So, let's break down a few things here. We've just gone over the need to have, the need to drop, need to have, and need to win. So when we're talking the need to drop, we're talking about your very basic brand offer based tools, SEM and traditional display. When you're saying, you know what? Here we go, I've got a bunch of used cars, come on down, okay? Just a little too vague for today's consumer. People right. are you know, typing in more keywords into their search, three, four, five keywords as opposed to one or two. 
Honda Accord. No, they're punching in all the details, the trim Used level, the Honda price, Accord. the color, all that 2009. stuff. 2009. Exactly yeah. right. So then being able to get a little more make model based, you can improve what you're doing in search engine marketing. Okay, Just by taking the time to create more segments, to create more different categories, and you can do that like we saw for that CDRJ store where you're breaking out the models and starting to give them specific attention. The next piece we get into Facebook, right? Being able to do that, make model, same sort of idea. Listings, pretty much a, a given for make model pre-owned. There's not a lot of folks that we talk to that aren't doing any kind of listings. We're seeing reductions and we're seeing companies like Cox Automotive that are making significant investment in other tools to help continue to grow their business as people are moving away from the typical third party listings premium tools, right? So the business is shifting a little bit. So with that shift, you want to be making sure that you're managing your business there and trying other things. Those trying other things is when we're talking about those need to win tools. Dynamic search, okay, getting more involved in search, being able to be more strategic with that. But it's not a set it and forget it tool. Make right. sure that you're working with people that are tweaking the nuance of it every single day, right? And then you've got dynamic inventory ads, okay? Again, same sort of thing. Our team, we've got a great team of probably close to 20 team members that are sitting there adjusting programs all day, every day. Adjusting inventory, adjusting the different pieces, adjusting all the information and how it's presented to get the very best performance out of dynamic inventory display. And I challenge anyone to show me something that's better. On the carousel make model, again, that's into the Facebook stuff. So when you're introducing that inventory, that make model and trim and specific VIN level inventory into the Facebook environment, you can start to see some more direct results and some more direct performance on that pre-owned. Again, avoiding being owned. Okay, so is, uh, before I ask you this question, yeah, uh, cheers. Tight. we're going to say to the folks watching the webinar, if you want to send us a question, mm. feel free to do that right now in the chat below, and, uh, and we'll get to those here momentarily. So Fantastic. feel free to do that after you're finished with the presentation. Uh, is there any benefit to doing inventory level marketing for new cars? Oh, okay, great question. Um, and I, I think we probably have slides um, here on that, so we'll get into it. But so much of this new capability of marketing at a VIN level is based on machine learning, computer intelligent computing, right? So if you can do something smart to market your pre-owned vehicles, you can probably apply some to market your new vehicles. Right. Okay. okay. So let's uh, let's have a look and see what we got. Yeah, new car marketing, right? So pretty much each and every one of these tools. Uh, in fact, I would say yes, all three that we talked about. So dynamic search, dynamic display, inventory based advertising, and running inventory within a Facebook carousel ad is going to have full functionality within the new cars. Though what I would say is super important for our customers that are listening today, our friends that are listening today, is that they want to make sure that they're taking great shots, that they're really merchandising their new vehicles well. Okay, Live image is something that translates so much better when you're talking about unique pieces of inventory. But you take your new car marketing and you add used car marketing techniques right? that we talked about, you're going to get that total inventory marketing equation working for you. So when we're talking about that, we're talking about those new vehicles, right? So we're talking about inventory focus of those new vehicles so that you can drive the consumer to that SRP page, okay? That's the need to have, right? That's that first level. And then we're talking about inventory ads, okay? Getting down VIN specific. Fun part about what goes on in the inventory world, if you're talking CPO or you're talking new, you can get into the co-op approval area, right? Real nice way to save a buck, real nice way to make your dollars go further working with your um, franchise partner, right? Yep. So super important there. So those pieces of the puzzle are really making things work well and it's helping folks to really understand what's going on in this area, right? So we've talked about, quite simply, the fact that most people are not as focused on new uh, or as on used rather vehicle marketing as they could be. We've talked about the fact that you're actually making more money each time you sell a pre-owned vehicle, and I don't think that's a surprise for anybody, but mm -hmm. it's fun to look at the stats and see just how big a difference there is. Then we're talking about that, that off-brand and that consumer who knows what they want, but you don't know what they want, and you're showing them a blanket, boring ad that says, come on down, I got some used cars. Sleeper, yep. right? Click so, off. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So when you've got these highly targeted inventory ads, you're able to then say, hey, we know Joe's looking for that new minivan or crossover to get his girls around the neighborhood, right? And then you've got that crossover that happens, putting the equation together to 
put that new and used to get the most out of your business. And that's pretty straightforward. This is me, but let's, let's get to questions. Clearly, I'm easy to find, just like our uh, friend up there in the corner, but right. the numbers should, uh, should unlike, help out. Unlike Waldo, mm -hmm. we know where you are. There's Ian. It was, it was hard to find me earlier today, but it, it all, uh, it yes. all worked out. <laughs> yeah, and that's another webinar. <laughs> yeah, we indeed. Know. Okay, so um, Colin says, are you saying radio and TV is out? I know you mentioned that uh, earlier. Uh, earlier. Yeah. Um, so look, I, um, I believe in a complete media mix. And I think it's very important that you consider all available options, particularly from a market basis. You know how I was saying benchmarking? You don't want to benchmark against everybody. You want to benchmark against yourself and test things and see how they work for right. you in your market. It could well be that you're in a market that has a very active local paper that is still effective. It could be that you're in a market that has significant radio reach, okay, where you've got 10 stores in a certain area that's going to be reached by the same station. right? That's valuable to you as a business to make that happen. But if you're a single point location, and you're going to use radio, and you're going to reach significantly more people than you could ever get into your store, right? You're going to reach a you know, 100, 200 mile radius, and you're only talking about the 30 that you focus on. It doesn't necessarily make sense. So I wouldn't right. say they're out, but it's so important to really assess the value that you're there getting from them. And it's an interesting thing. Assessing that value is based on business levels and that sort of stuff. It's pretty tough to say, hey, did you hear my ad on the radio station or what, what brought you in? Because statistically, people ask those questions and they get gobbledygook answers because consumers just want to answer the question and move on to their interests. Right. Okay? They're not there to answer a survey, so you're not really going to get the right information from there. So you've got to be uh, cautious with those, but I wouldn't uh, throw them out with the bathwater just yet. Yeah, and, and the thing is you're talking about an effort. Maybe you continue those things or whatever is working, but yep. let's figure out how to do better in this situation. Yeah, and uh, you know it's been it's been said uh, very well by by uh, many folks uh, before me, and I, I like this idea. When you're looking at your budget, focus primarily on filling the bucket full of vehicle detail paged viewers. Okay, so if you're investing, invest on driving traffic to your cars. And then the next level up should be focused on driving traffic to the search results pages. Okay, again, pretty darn close to those individual cars. Then you can go a level up to other digital solutions. Okay, then maybe up to direct mail, pretty valuable solution. And then we're going to talk, okay, we've got extra money, we can sponsor a sports team, we can do some radio ads, we can get into the newspaper, that kind of stuff. But you want to make sure that you fill that bucket. It's kind of like when you're trying to fill a jar full of sand and rocks and all that kind of stuff you want to put in all the right stuff first to make sure that you've got enough money for everything. All the right stuff. All right, any recommendations for getting to VIN level email and mail marketing besides just listing specific vehicles? Okay, um, so I actually haven't seen, uh, and I would love if anyone's listening that, that knows one, I haven't seen a great dynamic mail uh, solution, right? To be able to look out in the marketplace, understand what specific consumers are interested in, and send them the exactly right VIN. So I would say that what you want to get into is the segmentation that you've got within your CRM and then making sure that you say, okay, this is a consumer who's consistently bought a vehicle like this, right? That they're a regular buyer from us. We're going to send them the email that has vehicles that are similar. If we're talking three years later and they're about to turn over, if we've seen a few things and had some indication that they're a potential buyer, we want to look at what they've had before. Or if we have some sort of indication that they're in a changing mode, maybe their family's growing, that kind of thing, to be able to do that. It's really going to be based on the CRM at this standpoint, because getting that research into the email, I haven't seen it done super well. It's something that's you know, kind of in the back of my mind saying, hey, maybe that's something we should do. So thank you for the question. <laughs> do you see uh, a lot of dealerships, and we've talked about this before on CBT News, where you do all this marketing, you do all this advertising, but Maybe the phone process isn't good, or maybe you mentioned CRM. Maybe they're not using it 100%, not even 80%, yeah. but yeah. maybe 40%. And you're scratching your head going, we appreciate you using us. And yeah. We're giving you all this great information. You have to start. It has to be effective now. Yeah. It has to so, be impactful. 100%. I'll bring up an example. One of, my, one of the favorite things I've seen in the last uh, couple months, um, our friends over at the Asbury Group, we spend a lot of time with them. And there's, outside of one of the uh, leaders' office in their marketing team, there is a sign 
uh, and I, I hope I'm not uh, giving away too much information. We'll, we'll say it's actually, it's actually a different dealer group now that I recall. <clears throat> um, but in any case, what they've got up is people that have called in and said, we're getting too many leads. Okay, we're getting too much good traffic, too many good buyers, and we don't have the systems at play to deliver the best experience on as much good traffic and as much good leads, as many good buyers as you're sending us. That's, you know, they, they go hand in hand. And, and there's, uh, there's a great guy who spends a lot of time on CBT, David Kane, uh, who with Process, I'm sure, can, can help out. Host a show here. Yeah, yeah. Kane absolutely. And, Company every and, Thursday. and just a fantastic guy and fantastic family. Love those guys. Yeah. Um, but the you know process, and if that's a if that's an issue that, um, that this uh, person asking the question is dealing with, that would be uh, one to look at and a, and a group to look at to help. And I'm sure at, when you mention that sign, uh, yeah, uh, third-party vendors I, are, are going. Wait, what? Yeah, okay, yeah, because our, well, our we get the converse too, out. right? Right, we get the the complete opposite where um, there there isn't that sign, there isn't that hand up saying this is too many, but we know that things are breaking down on down the line. You know, if we do a secret shopper kind of experience or if we figure out that, yeah, you know what, your processes aren't in place to make it work, or even that your inventory isn't merchandised well enough, okay? If you're running with V Auto, okay, and you've got your inventory well managed and well priced, you should be running dynamic inventory display, okay? Because you know that in market, you are performing. You know that you're competitive in your market, so get those vehicles out there promoted to the right people. So it's one of those things, you know, it's a great tool that goes hand in glove with that V Auto world and proper merchandising of those cars. And tell us those who just joined us, maybe for the first time, they're seeing you yeah. for the first time or just jumped in for some reason, um, how long you've been with Speed Shift Media and exactly what it is you guys do. Okay, fantastic. So um, I've been with Speed Shift Media now for about three and, a half, uh, three and a half years. Fantastic company, really an American company, but most of us, most of the development house and most of the team uh, is up there in Vancouver, Canada. And we have likely been working with you already, you the dealer, you the dealer group and, and dealer partners, um, via Autotrader, Cars.com, Edmunds, all those folks that needed really intelligent, dynamic inventory display solutions to drive traffic to their own VDP pages, to increase the leads that they're then selling to you, their partners. And we've now, over the last three years, launched the Auto Audience Network. More products coming out or more tools for agencies and for dealers coming out very soon um, that are going to help folks to better promote their inventory more intelligently to the right people. And really, it's a question of rounding out your strategy. You're doing great on SEM. Now it's time to introduce dynamic inventory display. SpeedShift Media is here to help. Gotcha. And you guys will be at NADA. Yes, sir. In a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, anything else coming out? I know. I know. It's all about evolving in this yeah. business. Things could change from weeks to months. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. So, dealers and, visit um, your booth. What What can they expect? Yeah. You know what? I think um, anyone coming by the booth first off should ask about the Auto Audience Network or just about Speed Shift Media Dynamic Display Ads. Okay. The, the next thing they should be uh, watching for is that uh, dealer specials. So, specials is a little frequented page on the dealer site. You know, sixth or seventh after, you know, certainly after new inventory, used inventory, certainly after um, uh, service, all that sort of stuff, and parts even. And then people will look at specials. And we're reinventing the way specials are delivered and promoted throughout the website to enhance the visibility of those vehicles that have got a little old, that you really need to move. And frankly, you're not willing to spend too much in the way of incremental marketing dollars to move those vehicles because that's going to erode your profit. So we've built out a, a solution that we'll be talking about at NADA that folks, uh, I would certainly encourage them to come by uh, our booth and check that out. One last thing, this is obviously needed, this was important. Uh, we ended 2016 on a high, yeah. record breaking, but then a lot of folks are saying, well, we are going to plateau here in 2017, it's early on. but. In the back of our mind, we still had that influx of used cars, off-lease vehicles coming in. So, yeah. it, I mean, there's no greater time, correct, than to concentrate now yeah. on your marketing yeah. for used vehicles. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the, the marketing for used vehicles and that ability to translate that into new vehicles effectively, <clears throat> really, it's VIN-level marketing that's going to help make that difference in the marketplace. Hey, Krutschenk, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. 
Speed Shift Media, we appreciate you uh, out there watching today. And obviously, we want to thank those for uh, the questions, those for tuning in. All the information is right up there if anyone needs to contact you again at NADA next week. And you will be at the CBT Conference and Expo coming yes, up March sir. 7th through the 9th. Yeah, looking uh, forward to that. So our well. friends in Atlanta and anyone who travels in, in fact, we had some friends uh, from Canada last year come in from uh, Edmonton, I believe. Yep. So all over the place. You're all over the place. We appreciate your time. There's probably no one better uh, with information like this. So uh, we appreciate you using CBT News for this live webinar. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a great day. And again, the information is up there if you need to contact Ian beyond this point. Have a great afternoon and thanks for watching CBT News.